right now on Colorado Point of View. And then there were two Republicans narrowed down the field of candidates looking to defeat Governor Jared Polis. Starting today, we put people over politics. I'm Heidi Ganahl, and I want to be your next governor. Heidi Ganahl and Greg Lopez join us in studio to give their Colorado point of view on the issues that matter most to you. And the horrific King Super shooting in Boulder leads one Colorado congressman to take action. There are common sense steps that we can take today that we believe could save lives. However, not everyone's on board with the plan. That and more right here, right now on Colorado Point of View. A very good morning to you. I'm Matt Morrow, and this is Colorado Point of View. Republicans here in Colorado have not won a governor's race in some 20 years, but they are hoping a red wave this year will change that and make history. The Colorado GOP narrowed down the candidates for June's primary to these two. CU Boulder Regent Heidi Ganahl and former Parker Mayor and 2018 gubernatorial candidate Greg Lopez. Lopez beat Ganahl by just 34, 64 votes rather at the Republican statewide assembly last week in Colorado Springs. In his speech, Lopez touched on getting tough on crime and election security. Meanwhile, Ganahl reminded voters she is the only Republican to win a statewide office in Colorado in nearly eight years. Both candidates are here on Colorado Point of View this morning. I'll talk with Heidi Ganahl in just a few minutes, but first joining me right now is Greg Lopez. Greg, thanks for being here. I appreciate it very much. Pleasure to be here, Matt. Let's go back to last weekend and part of your speech at the state convention. Listen to this. I will take votes away from Polis from his strongest base, the urban corridor. Now, Jared Polis won by 10 points four years ago, almost 300,000 votes over Walker Stapleton, who had a lot of name recognition. How do you think you can siphon off that many votes, particularly in the urban area? You know, I've been out there talking to the community for the last two and a half years. More importantly, though, I've been in that community for the last 20 years. I'm the former president of the Denver Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and I'm the former director of the United States Small Business Administration here in Colorado. So I have a lot of connections with the small business community, elected officials, and they know me more as someone that fights for the communities and small business than they know me as someone running for governor. Nationwide, or statewide rather, Republicans have lost 43,000 registered voters since 2018. Democrats have gained a little bit, mm -hmm. unaffiliated, have mm -hmm. soared. What does that tell you about the Republican Party and the state of the voters here in Colorado and what you need to address as a candidate? Well, I will tell you that the Republican Party sometimes struggles in finding candidates that can actually deliver a message that connects with the people. And that's what makes me different and unique. I know how to connect with all types of individuals, regardless of income level or jobs or careers, because I come from humble beginnings. Look, I'm just like everybody else. You know, I don't come from money. I don't come from a great education, but I do know how to have a good conversation with individuals about what keeps them up at night. Now, election security, a major issue nationwide right here in Colorado. Let's go back to the convention one more time where you talked about Mesa County Clerk and Secretary of State candidate Tina Peters, who's facing numerous criminal charges out in Mesa County. Listen. And if Tina, and if Tina Peterson, Peters should be falsely accused as governor, I will pardon her. You get a lot of crowd cheering right there. I'm a little confused by what you said. If Peters is wrongly accused, you'll pardon her. But the governor can only pardon someone who has been convicted. Um, and that case is still working through the court. So what exactly did you mean by that? You know, I'm, I'm a strong believer in the rule of law. OK, but I can also tell you that sometimes our judicial system is not necessarily always doing the right thing as it pertains to, you know, the sentencing and so forth. So what I'm saying is, look, if she is unjustly punished for whatever reason, and I read the indictment, you know, I have some concerns of what happened on the indictment and what they're putting in there. But I think we need to understand that people are innocent until they're proven guilty. Absolutely. Even though that indictment was handed down, not by a prosecutor, not by an elected official, but by her voters of a grand jury. Yes. You know, and, and, and you win. when you read it, you, there's some things that give me pause for concern. But again, we'll, we got to wait to see how it all plays itself out. OK. Uh, also at the convention, delegates voted to take on a platform that said Colorado is basically they want Colorado to basically get rid of most mail in voting. Do you agree with that? You know, I truly believe that people now want to feel that they can go to the ballot box. Right. And feel comfortable 
Because what's happened over the last couple of election cycles, people are starting to question, is my vote truly being protected? Is my vote truly being represented the way I want it to be? You know, it's always worked. For the last 142 years here in Colorado, you know, we did milk, we did hand counting, and we stood in line. You know, and there's nothing wrong in standing in line. We stand in line for concerts. We stand in line for Bronco games. There's no reason why we can't stand in line to cast our vote, which is our civic duty. Does this mean that you don't think that the last uh, more than a decade of mail-in voting here in Colorado has been the best thing? I think what, uh, what I'm trying to say is that, look, people want to stand in line. They want to feel that, you know what, I'm actually doing something for the betterment of our state. You know, the mail ballot, I think a lot of people see it as convenient. When you talk to people, they say, well, it's easy for me to vote because I can vote in my living room and I can vote during a commercial. But I think it's more important for people to actually know what it is that the issues are and stand in line. And you know what? I remember getting that little sticker that said I voted. And people are always very proud walking out saying, you know what? I voted today because that's part of our government system on how we elect our elected officials. Okay, another big issue here in Colorado that we're going to see in the race is crime. It has gone up rapidly during the last administration. You said in your speech last weekend that you want to reduce crime by 30 percent in Colorado in just two years. How do you make that happen as a governor? Well, you know what? You first of all, you got to let the law enforcement agencies know that you're there with them. You're going to stand up tall to defend them. You're going to make sure that people recognize that, look, these men and women in uniform, their husbands, their fathers, you know, their brothers, their sisters, they're there to protect us. So we need to make sure that their visibility is growing so that people that are having, you know, thoughts of doing something that's not appropriate to our community, that they will have a second thought about doing it in itself. I tell you, I've been talking to a lot of enforcement uh, officers, police chiefs, sheriffs, and they say, Greg, we can do this. If we can start rolling back some of the legislation that's hampering us, handcuffing us, we can definitely reduce crime. All right. Greg Lopez, GOP primary candidate for governor. Greg, thanks for being here. I you appreciate bet it. It's my much. pleasure. Up next is his opponent. Heidi Ganahl joins me to give us her Colorado point of view. Plus, the gun control debate heats up in Colorado again. New bills introduced by one of the state's congressmen a year after a tragic mass shooting at a Boulder King Super. Stay there. sleeves and get to the root cause of homelessness and crime so we can fix it not finance it then let's work together to fix the darn roads and make sure our lifeline to rural colorado is always open and get back to skiing in 90 minutes what do you think about that <laughs> That is CU Regent Heidi Ganahl when she launched her campaign for governor and monument late last year. She's on the GOP primary ballot for this June, and she is here with me this morning. Heidi Ganahl, thanks for being here. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me. You know this probably about as well as anyone in Colorado. Republicans have struggled here, especially in statewide races. You're the only statewide GOP candidate in office right now, period. Why do you think you can win a statewide race in November if you're on the ballot? Well, I think I'm speaking to the issues that people, all people care about in Colorado, which first and foremost is our kids. I'm a mom of four, ranging in age from nine to 26. So I'm in the trenches on the issues around schools and mental health and drugs. We have the second highest drug addiction rate in the country for our kids right now. And then I'm also a small business owner. I built Camp Bow Wow. And so I've written, uh, signed the front of a lot of paychecks over the years, and I know how to support small business owners. And finally, I grew up in Monument, a small town. And so I know how important important the small towns of Colorado are to the spirit of our way of life here. And there are so many of them here that we love. Yes. Um, you just mentioned that crime is a huge issue in Colorado. It is skyrocketing. In fact, you wrote an op-ed about it in the Denver Gazette last summer, and you wrote this. Let me quote here. It says, murders are up 81 percent in Denver since 2019, and 30 percent of Denver's murders were committed by felons on parole. Carjacking is up a whopping 140 percent. It's all basically true, but you didn't address in the op-ed what you would do as governor Sure. to fix this. So what would you do to address the crime issue that a governor, something a governor can do? Well, day one, I would give pink slips to the parole board and replace those folks with people who care about keeping the bad guys in jail and protecting our, our neighborhoods and our cities. Um, the other thing I would do is support our law enforcement officials. We've got to make sure that our police officers have the resources that they need to do their job. And then finally, I would stop us being a sanctuary state. We have a huge issue with fentanyl. It's flowing across the border, and it's probably the number one issue I hear about from law enforcement across the state. And finally, bail reform. 
these personal recognizance bonds and letting people out of jail and, and then back out on the streets within 24 hours, that's not doing any favors for our neighborhoods and our streets. How do you address that with judges? They're the ones who ultimately set the bail. A district attorney or a prosecutor can ask for a PR bond or can ask for a very high bond, but the judge has the ultimate say in that case. What would you tell them? Well, I think it's about leadership and speaking from the governor's pulpit, right? And setting the tone that we are going to be a law and order state again, and we aren't going to tolerate some of the things that are being done, whether it's the judges or the legislature or law enforcement, um, the folks that are against law enforcement in the state. We can always do better. There's lots of room for improvement, but it doesn't mean to not support our police officers and not allow um, you know, criminals to be kept in jail and not clean up our streets. Homelessness is another huge issue. Another important issue, inflation. Recently, in a couple of radio interviews, you said you want to eliminate the state income tax mm -hmm. and cut the 22 cent gas tax in half. Mm -hmm. If you want to make this happen, mm -hmm. most likely you're going to have to work with Democrats at That's the right. state house. How are you going to try to get that done when they don't seem too privy to the idea right now? Well, I think everyone's dealing with inflation and the high cost of living. It's a huge issue in Colorado. It's becoming unaffordable to live here. And as a CU regent, I've had to reach across the aisle. We have a very political board. There's nine of us, and it's a 5-4 majority for the Democrats now. It was a 5-4 Republican majority. So I've gotten a lot of things done with the Democrats on our board and been able to roll up my sleeves and figure out compromises, and I'll do the same thing as a governor. All right, you were at the state assembly last week, and the delegates voted for a platform that basically said they want to get rid of most mail-in balloting here in Colorado that was put in by a bipartisan group. Do you agree with them on that? You know, what I'm concerned about is that folks don't feel confident that their vote matters, and we need to get back to restoring confidence, and I think we do that through transparency and being open about all of our processes and making sure that people are involved. And I've encouraged people who are concerned about this to be election judges and poll watchers and get involved in the process, see how it works, and then make your own judgments. But does that mean getting rid of mail and balloting here in Colorado? I think mail-in balloting absolutely has a place, but I also think that there are other things we can do to secure the process, um, like ballot harvesting can be an issue, cleaning up the voter rolls, making sure that photo ID is used at the right places in the process. So I think we've got a lot of work to do to restore confidence, and that's my priority as governor and as a candidate running as well. All right, Heidi Ganahl, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me. A reminder, the primary election is June 28th. Up next, our political panel gives us their Colorado point of view on the governor's race and a two-day hearing leads to some major changes in how the state wants to fight fentanyl. Plus, Mesa County dealing with a big spike in youth crime. That and much more in your Rocky Mountain Roundup. Stay right there. Colorado point of view, we are getting the lowdown on the Republican primary race for governor and the governor's race in general. I'm sure these two gentlemen have a lot to say about it. Democratic strategist, presidential and gubernatorial advisor Andy Boyd, and along with Republican strategist and the director of the Advanced Colorado Institute, Michael Fields. And gentlemen, we have heard from Republicans quite a bit today. Now to a Democrat, Andy, the governor's race. Either of those two do you think can present a true challenge to Governor Jared Polis, who is the only Democrat in Colorado up in a recent Synergy poll? He was up by 6%. Right, I really don't see b both good people. I think Greg and, and Heidi are both fine Coloradans. I, I don't think that either one of them will be governor in November uh, for a couple fundamental reasons. One is that really Republicans are very chaotic right now and divisive as a party. Uh, that includes Colorado. The other thing is that Republicans favor a lot of special interests. Polis is doing what's right for Colorado. Polis also has a four-year record of being pragmatic. He's a moderate. He's done very well through a very chaotic time in Colorado and deserves another four years. Do you agree with what Andy said, Michael, when he said Republicans are kind of splintered apart right now? I don't. I think that they're united in the fact they want to win in November. Uh, you look at, you know, the fact that Jared Polis has to answer the question, are you better off than you were four years ago as Coloradans? I don't think that we are. And people are voting with their feet, right? We have more people moving out of Colorado than moving in since forever. Uh, that's never happened before. And so you have high crime, uh, you have high inflation right now, and you have Governor Polis who has signed a fentanyl bill to decriminalize fentanyl. You had, a, you know, he signed a bill uh, to raise property taxes, to raise the gas tax. I think these are the kind of messages that are going to be talked about come November. It's just a question. You said, and a lot of times it comes down to this, are you better off now than you were four years ago? You can say right. this for uh, gubernatorial races, presidential races too, but how does the pandemic play into that? Right. I mean, I think a lot of people, bottom line, no matter who your governor is, what state you're in, have struggled a lot in the last few years. Sure. I think that the, the pandemic plays a big part of that, a big role, um, but you look at the national politics and you look at the polling uh, that, that is happening up there and saying the direction of the country, how do we respond to it? And you saw the backlash 
backlash in Virginia. Uh, you're seeing it in other places across the country. Uh, but here in Colorado, it is, are you opening up Colorado? Are you uh, lowering taxes? He are you is. lowering regulations? He's lowering taxes uh, on middle class and working no, families. He has not done that. He's, he's done raised it. taxes look, time and time facts. again. Look at, look, oh, look at the facts. fees and everything else that he's raised. And so this is, how do you respond? Is it, you know, in Florida, they're doing really well. In Colorado, we're he's doing worse. kids and families, are, businesses people first. People are moving out because it's of it. Not, it's not. Okay. The race is going to come down to votes. Um, we talked with the governor candidates about this. I want to ask you to, at the state assembly last week, and the Colorado GOP delegates voted to say overall they want to get rid of mail-in voting. Michael, do you agree with that? Is that a good plan for them to do? Uh, I don't. And I think you look at the assembly. Uh, it's a very specific process where you have a few thousand people that vote. Uh, and, you know, 99.7 percent of Republicans, we have almost a million Republicans in Colorado, 99.7 of them have not weighed in yet. And so I think they want to win. Uh, I think that, you know, they're not focused on a lot of these uh, issues that the people at the assembly are. And I'm glad there's passionate people that will do that. Um, but when it comes down to it, people like mail in ballots here in Colorado, it's worked pretty well for us. We can improve that system. Uh, but I think overall, this is an election not about how you vote, but, uh, you know, who you're going to vote for. And, and I think that's the question that Democrats have to defend their record. Uh, and I don't think they're doing a good job of it. Andy, <laughs> I, I think that's laughable. We have what the state is one of the most secure places to vote in the country. Overwhelmingly, people Colorado, in Colorado support mail-in voting, 62 percent. So I just think I think it's a very secure system. I think it's a worthwhile system. The comments made earlier by uh, Mr. Lopez about people want to stand in line. Uh, people don't want to stand in line. People want to ease of access to voting and, uh, you know, taking away bottles of water from people standing in line, food. Uh, taking them away. I mean, all this kind of stuff that Republicans are opposing about standing in line for hours is simply ridiculous. Okay, I mean, mail-in were, voting clearly is the way to go. Those are some laws passed in other states, not here in Colorado. Uh, real quickly, but fentanyl, mentioned nationally. A, a major issue here. After two days of testimony, the state judiciary committee amended a bill that, as of it, uh, today, it would make it a felony to knowingly possess more than one gram of the deadly drug. Andy, is this the right way to go for Democrats? I do. I do strongly believe that. I think any any possession of fentanyl in any way uh, it sends a message that if we are soft on that, we're soft on other things. So I think this is exactly the right direction to go. The other thing about fentanyl that's really interesting is this is not a specific issue to Colorado. This is a national issue. It but is. Colorado has uh, a particular issue and a, a problem with synthetic drugs. And I think the Democrats are leading the way to fight that fight and to make sure that we are in place when this stuff happens. And I will also say this. What Republicans are doing is a, a losing proposition. We had a war on drugs in the 80s. It fell apart. It broke in half. And Republicans simply just don't learn or can't remember the fact that it was completely failed. And here we go again with Republican tactics and try to fix it, and it won't work. Michael, does it need to be any amount of fentanyl for most Republicans uh, to get on board with it, this? I think it absolutely has to be any amount of fentanyl. Look, one gram is better than the four grams that the Democrats implemented. Uh, but we are the, we have the second worst in terms of overdoses uh, of fentanyl in the country. It is, a, it is a countrywide problem, but it's worse here in Colorado. And this isn't about all drugs. This is about fentanyl, which is killing a lot of people, killing kids at their school desk. Uh, this is a horrible drug, and it needs to be. We need to listen to law enforcement. We need to listen to DAs. And even a few Democrats have come out uh, and said, it has to be zero. One, one Democrat who is in a swing uh, race this, this upcoming election voted with Republicans on that. And I think there'll be more of them on the floor. So I don't think this debate's over. I think there has to go, it has to go down to zero. Any possession should be a felony. All right. We'll see what happens in the next few weeks in the state house on that. Andy and Michael, unfortunately, we're out of time. But thank you both for being here very much. I thank appreciate you both. it. Happy Easter as well. Ah, yes. All right. Guns. Another hot topic here in the state. Right now, more than a year after the deadly King Super shooting in Boulder, the congressman who represents that area has a new bill he's introducing, hoping to prevent another mass shooting. Gabrielle Franklin is getting all Colorado points of view right now. For years, conservatives have pleaded with lawmakers to not infringe on their gun rights. Congressman Joe Neguz just introduced four bills designed to keep communities safe from mass shootings without imposing restrictions on firearms. And some gun rights advocates still aren't happy about it. We all will never forget the Columbine High School shooting in 1999 or the Aurora movie theater shooting in 2012. And the legislation that we are announcing today is born from the deep anguish that we feel at each of these tragedies and the deep desire that we have uh, to ensure that these tragedies don't happen again. This week, Congressman Joe Neguse introduced four bills mainly aimed at ensuring workplaces and communities have funding for security and mental health resources in areas that have experienced gun violence. And I'll continue 
each and every day that I have the honor of representing our community in Washington to push for common sense gun violence prevention measures. If you want to talk about mental health concern, um, Congressman Nagus has mental health issues. If he really thinks that's going to stop um, crazy people from committing mass shootings, boy, he, he is not thinking properly. Gun rights advocate Dudley Brown says the proposals aren't an answer to gun violence. Instead, he believes more access to guns is the solution. Criminals want soft targets. They, they want to go in areas where it's not legal to possess a firearm. They want to go to schools, New York subways, places where people are very unlikely to have firearms. And um, guess what? They don't want to go to a gun show. And Congressman Nagus says that he hopes these measures just begin the conversation around stopping mass shootings. He says that he plans to bring other lawmakers who serve areas that are heavily impacted by gun violence on board as co-sponsors. Gabrielle Franklin, Colorado Point of View. Now to the western slope where police are trying to stop an increase in crime, especially in young people. That's in this week's Rocky Mountain Roundup. I'm Austin Sack with CARIX 5 News in Grand Junction. This week, I've been investigating increasing youth crimes following the pandemic. Now, a few days ago, Mesa County Sheriff deputies arrested 19-year-old Devin Maestas on multiple counts of internet luring of a child. The teen faces eight charges and is ineligible for release. In January of this year, 19-year-old Brian Cohey pleaded not guilty to murder by reason of insanity. The Grand Junction teen was accused of beheading a homeless man. On a larger scale, Mesa County School District 51 saw more students bring dangerous weapons to campus than before the pandemic. Now, local officials now hope to expand the mental health support system and a creative move offer more recreation programs to young people in Mesa County. In Grand Junction, I'm Austin Sack, Colorado Point of View. All right, Austin, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. You just heard from the two GOP candidates for governor. Remember, the primary is coming up on June 28th. We have reached out to Governor Jared Polis and his campaign. We hope to have him on Colorado Point of View very soon. Thank you so much for joining us today. Happy Easter. I'll see you back here next week.